so hit me. Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Andrea, if you're new here. I make lifestyle vlogs, including trending videos and what I eat in the days, and sometimes I'll do taste tests slash try on hauls. This video is the first of a new pre-PA series on my channel. I'll be going to PA school this coming fall, and I remember when I was in the application process, I was nervous, I was wanting to hear other people's per perspectives, I wanted to know what it took for them to get to that point, so here I am to give you my perspective. In this video, I'll be going through my timeline from when I thought first thought about a career in medicine all the way to my acceptances. I'll be making separate videos that go into detail with my CASPA application process, some pre-PA interview tips, and even why it is that I chose to become a PA in the first place. So if you'd like to stick around and see those videos, they'll be incoming the next few months while the CASPA application opens up for the next pre-PA cycle, and I'll still be uploading my other videos in between. Personally, the journey to PA school is long and challenging, and I don't think for anybody it is straightforward. So don't compare yourself to my journey. Don't compare yourself to the things that I have done, because I have done the same thing. I've compared to self my other people. I've compared myself to other people, and it will only harm you unless you use it to motivate you. Then, then go ahead and use it as fuel to your fire. So we're gonna start all the way back in 2012 when I was a sophomore in high school and I had just finished taking a health science course. This course really piqued my interest in medicine. So I joined a health club called HOSA, Health Occupation Students of America. I was part of a community health organizer group where me and three other students would go out into the community and present the topic of stroke. Many times when we would go out and present to the public, we'd have family members of stroke patients come up to us and thank us for what we were doing as they had wished that they knew what we were presenting prior to their, their family members having a stroke. I was part of the team all the way until senior year when I graduated in 2014 and I knew that I wanted to pursue medicine but I wasn't sure exactly what it is that I wanted to be. Did I want to be a doctor? Did I want to be a physical therapist? Did I want to be a nurse? Did I want to be a pharmacist? I had no idea, but I knew either way I needed to go to college. So I signed up to my local community college where I was a full-time student working towards an associate's degree in biology. At the same time, I signed up for my first job and it was actually a full-time job. I was a life coach in a clinic where my mother was the receptionist. And as a life coach, I worked alongside psychologists, psychiatrists, and case managers to help the families of mental health pediatric patients better cope with the situation and, and help to better the life of both the patient and the family. To say the least, I gained a lot of experience. However, I also learned that having a full, having a full-time job and being a full-time student are both very difficult to do simultaneously. If you are doing this right now, I praise you because although I did it too, I would not go back to that. Now we're in 2016 where I graduated with my associate's degree in biology and I then transferred over to a four-year university where I aimed to earn a bachelor's degree in neuroscience. You might ask, why neuroscience? <laughs> Main reason why I chose neuroscience is I took an AP psychology course in high school and, it, and in that course, I learned I was very interested with the physiological aspect of the brain and the nerves. And since the school I was going to did offer neuroscience as a bachelor's degree, I knew that that's what I wanted. And then also a bonus was it is not one of the most common pre-health majors, such as biology, biochem, and chemistry. So I felt that the neuroscience major would at least help me stand out in terms of my application, regardless of where I went. So as soon as I went to the four-year university in 2016, I found a neuroscience professor and I asked them, if I could participate in their research lab. They were super kind and super understanding. And since my school is very small, there was not a lot of competition to get a spot in a research lab. So I was given an independent project that I was able to work on the rest of my time earning my bachelor's degree. And towards the end of my bachelor's degree, I wrote a thesis on the research I had conducted. I personally really valued my research experience. I think it parallels very nicely to the PA profession where I was working independently and at the same time working underneath a supervisor, which was my research advisor, who I could come up to with questions and we would work on the process and coming up with the solution together. Similar to how a physician assistant is working underneath a physician and able to present questions and dilemmas to the physician and they can work on it together to figure out a solution. At the same time as I was doing my research, I was also very involved in extracurricular activities I was a community health organizer where similar to my community awareness group, we went out into the community and presented multiple health topics focusing on college students. I was one of the first students who was part of a first generation college club in my school where the first year we each created a video discussing what it means to be a first generation college student to us. And then after the first year, I was still involved in the club as a mentor to other first generation college students. 
I even volunteered at a, at a local hospital during the summer. And as work study, I was a marketing intern. Now keep in mind that this whole time, I don't know what I wanna do. <laughs> I am still completely lost as to what field or what position I wanna take up. So I'm taking all the prerequisite courses for all the subjects. And it actually wasn't until I shadowed a plastic surgeon and the PA at the office that I learned that becoming a physician assistant was a career for me. I went into the plastic surgeon's office the first day. I introduced myself to him and he introduced me to the PA, Nicole. Now I'm gonna be honest, I had never heard of a physician assistant before. So I truthfully brushed it off. Weeks went on where I was shadowing the plastic surgeon. I would go once a week to, visit, to shadow the plastic surgeon. And during one of those visits, he did mention to me, if by any chance you wanna find out what it is that APA does, you can shadow Nicole. Um, once again, I brushed it off. I was like, why would I wanna be a PA? I think I wanna be a doctor. So I brushed it off. And it wasn't until one day I came into the office to shadow the surgeon and he wasn't there. I had already paid for, the, for my car rental to get me to the location, so I might as well stay. I asked Nicole if I could shadow her and she didn't hesitate and allowed me to shadow her and give me that opportunity where I quickly realized she does almost exactly what he does. She sees her own patients, she diagnoses her own patients, she treats her own patients, and sometimes she even sees his patients. Needless to say, when I left the office that day, I Googled what it meant to be a physician assistant, what it took to be a physician assistant. I knew that that's what I wanted to be. I never debated any other medical field. I knew that physician assistant was what I wanted to be. Then we fast forward to 2019 when I, when I graduated from the four-year university with my bachelor's degree. And as soon as I got home, I became an emergency room scribe. I chose to be a scribe specifically because I wanted to experience all the medical professions and see how they work together and be able to concretely say that nothing else interests me, only becoming a physician assistant. And being an emergency room scribe, in my opinion, was the best decision I've made. I say it so often that I loved being a scribe. You are overworked, I will not deny that. You are underpaid, I will also not deny that. But I didn't do it for the money, I did it for the experience. I didn't take anything less than experience from there. I even gained mentorship. And a year into being a scribe, I was able to pick up a leadership role, becoming a chief scribe during a pandemic, which to say the least is very difficult. And I wish I was able to prepare better, but I wasn't, it was difficult and I did it and I wouldn't take it back. I actually wish I would have started describing earlier. It would have supplemented my courses and helped concrete the information much better. We're now in 2020 when, as I mentioned, I am the chief scribe. At the same time, I was volunteering at our local animal shelter and preparing for the CASPA applications. The CASPA application opened April, 2020 and I submitted my application September 1st, 2020. The reason I submitted my application in 2020 was because I wanted to matriculate into the class of 2021. So keep in mind that if you want to apply to PA school, it will take you a full year to apply. That doesn't mean that you'll be applying throughout the whole process. If you do it early, you'll receive interviews and acceptances earlier versus if you do it later. But it does mean that you have to wait a year. I submitted my application in September and I won't be start September 2020 and I won't be starting until August 2021. I then received my first interview offer September 11th. Look, now looking at those numbers, I am impressed that it was only 10 days later, but those 10 days felt like yeah. I applied to eight schools in total. I received six interviews and of those six interviews, I completed five and received four acceptances. I, I made my final decision on which PA school I wanted to attend in November, 2020. And now I'm here, 2021, preparing to go to PA school. It was more or less an eight year process, but I did skip over a lot of details. There were many times that I was afraid, had imposter syndrome, that I felt I wasn't good enough. I always had self doubt. There were times that I thought, I can't do this. I'm not made for this. And always comparing myself to other people. I also felt that I had no guidance since I'm a first generation college student. There was nobody to turn to for help. I'm very proud of where I am today but I'm also very humbled. There were often times that I heard that it's easy to become a PA, and in my opinion, it is not. It's very difficult. It takes a lot of perseverance, dedication, and perspective. And if you truly feel that being a PA is what you wanna do, then you go for it and you work for it. You'll get there. It took a while, but you'll get there. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that it helped you even in the slightest. And I hope what you really take away from this video is everybody's journey is different. It doesn't make you less or more of an ideal PA candidate. There is no ideal PA candidate. Everyone has their strengths and everyone has something to add to the PA profession. Again, if you'd like to stick around, please subscribe. And if you like the video, please hit the like button. If you have any questions you'd like me to address, please leave it, leave it in the comments below and I'll address them in other videos. Thank you so much. See you in the next one.